Good afternoon. Good. Um, whenever you're watching this, hopefully it's bright and early. Uh, we got fan. Uh, okay, words are hard. We got Wednesday's Fantastic Five review coming up. I hope we are absolutely rolling in fives. That's my expectation. Um, guys, look, looking at some of these scores, and I'm basing this off of just a few because of how early I'm recording this. Some of y'all are watching these videos and taking notes. Like I got people just looking at my notebook going one going from a one to a five in one day. Like that's not by luck. You know, you that's by design. You you're taking notes, you're watching the videos, you're figuring out what am I doing wrong and how am I getting better. Boom. That's it. But y'all, there there we should not be getting consistent, you know, zeros, ones, twos. E look, even if you're getting a three, we shouldn't be getting it every day. We've got to show some sort of growth in these scores y'all if you need extra practice reach out to me i got you. you you've got to ask but when i look at how long some of you guys spend on these it's disheartening because i know for an absolute fact you're not giving your best effort when you got five questions and you're spending eight minutes on it i mean y'all that is you, you might as well not do it but there I, I, now the opposite of that too i got people spending like 30 35 minutes on this and maybe they're getting a one or a two i can live with that if you're putting forth the effort that's all i care about but normally guys that stuff's going to balance out if you're giving the effort eventually that result's going to come so man if y'all need some extra practice you just got to ask and majority of these scores i've seen are awesome um so i can't complain too much so getting right into it i'm going to kind of do number one and number two right at the same time which is kind of what i've been doing already um it's just easier to show you and then check it that way. So with uh, number one, converting 31 eighths to a mixed number, you guys know how we like to write it. That fraction bar means divided by, if I wanna change that to a mixed number, essentially what I'm doing is 31 divided by eight. So how many whole times can eight go into 31? And if you know your facts, it goes in four whole times. So four becomes my whole number. All right, and if I did the process, I'm sorry, Ignore what I just said. Oops. 31 divided by 8. I don't know if I had a 31 or if I had a 32. Either way, I was wrong. Um, so 31 eighths. How many whole times can 8 go into 31? It's not 4 times. It goes in 3 whole times. Because if I were to do 8 times 4, that would give me 32. That's impossible. Goes too high. I can't do 31 minus 32. So... It goes in three whole times, which becomes my whole number. When I keep going through that long division process, eight times three gets me to 24. Do that subtraction. It requires a little bit of, <clears throat> excuse me, regrouping. That would leave me with three remainder seven. That seven, that remainder becomes my numerator. And the denominator doesn't change. That would take me to three and seven eighths. Going down to the bottom, if I want to take a mixed number, seven and two fifths, and change that to an improper fraction like I just had, two steps. Down at the bottom, I need to multiply. Up at the top, I'm going to get that product and add. So I'd go five times seven and get 35, plus that numerator two gives me 37, and the denominator doesn't change. The reason I do those together is because now I'm going to use that same math to check. If I got three and seven eighths as my answer, I can check that doing exactly what I did with number two. I'm going to change that back to an improper fraction. I'll multiply at the bottom. Eight times three gives me 24 plus my numerator. Seven gives me 31 and the denominator doesn't change. If my improper fraction matches what it said in the question, I know I'm right. Same thing down at the bottom. I know I got a lot going on right here. If I got 37 fifths as my answer. I'm going to use what I did to solve number one to check it. 37 divided by five. Five goes into 37 seven whole times because five times seven gets me to 35. When I'm trying to get to 37, that remainder, that gap would be two, which becomes my numerator and the denominator doesn't change. Again, when I'm checking it, if that mixed number matches the mixed number that I started with, I know I'm correct. So I would have had B and C for number one. And as the week goes on, it's almost going to feel like I'm flying through um, 
these review videos, but this will have been the fifth or sixth time you've had a chance to see these and take notes, guys. So at this point, I'm thinking one and two are probably going to be our best questions on there. Uh, oh, Lord. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. I think I was saying number one and number two should probably be our best questions on there. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing they probably are. All right, let's get rid of those. Two. Number three was that question I was telling you yesterday. You've really got to read and you got to think because this one is a little bit different than yesterday. And I said there's a chance it can get a little trickier. And it did. Number three says, what fraction of this pizza is has been eaten? That is awful grammar. I'm a math teacher. Don't tell Miss G about that. What fraction of this pizza has been eaten? Guys, remember, when you eat the pizza, it's gone. You can't see it. So the answer I really didn't want anybody to choose would be D, because one-fourth is what's left. So again, I'm going to ignore the answer choices, and I'm just going to kind of look at the picture, and I'm going to say, okay, look, there's three-fourths of that pizza that's been eaten. Looking at the answer choices, guys, it's not there. It doesn't mean you're wrong. It doesn't mean you have to panic. But I guarantee you people are going to choose C and D just because they see a three or a four. It's going to happen. Remember what I told you in the video yesterday. If you don't see your answer, one of those answer choices could be equivalent. Even though it looks different, it represents the same exact amount. If I took my answer of three-fourths and I compared it to B, six-eighths, and I go bottoms up, four times six is 24, eight times three is 24, that fraction is equivalent, B would be my answer. So guys, you're going to see that it's going to happen a lot. Um, nine times out of, the, out of 10, when I start giving you fraction questions in class or on EOG Fridays or fan fives, you're not going to see your answer a lot of the time. So you're going to have to go that extra step and you got to, you know, have the mental toughness to not panic and just take one extra step to be able to get that question correct. So that one would have been B. I could see that one taking a drop today just because of it, how different it is from yesterday. But realistically, that's one of those questions where getting the, the, the first fraction isn't that hard. It's just a matter of knowing, hey, I got to find one that's equivalent. All right, moving on to number four. This is that question where I said, if we know our facts, we're going to be in good shape. If we don't know our facts, that's going to make it a little bit tougher. Here's why I really like taking notes. Because when we got 24, 28, I think 28 was in our fraction yesterday. If you took the time to list all those factors for 28, you already had them today. Like, that's, that's why I like to do this stuff. You might come across that again. We might have 24 in a fraction down the road. If you have all those, fract those factors written down, you, you already know them. That doesn't take you long to figure them out. But that is my first step. I need to list all my factors for 24. And again, this gets easier the more you uh, feel comfortable with your facts. I know I can do 1 times 24. I can do 2 times 12, I can do 3 times 8, I can do 4 times 6. A little tight, but we squeezed them in there. 28, I can do 1 times 14, oops, 28, I can do 2 times 14, I can do 4 times 7. Got all my factors listed out, step 1. Now I got to find my GCF, my greatest common factor. In this case, it would be four. So this isn't one of those ones where I can just split it in half and be done, um, which it is an answer choice, but I could even go lower than that. So I've got my GCF. I'll now take my numerator and denominator. I will divide each by four. 28 divided by four gives me seven, 20, or I'm struggling. 28 divided by 4 gives me 6. 28 divided by 4 gives me 7. In simplest form, that fraction would go down to 6 sevenths. And I would check that right over here to the right because I'm going to try to simplify that again. I can go 1, 2, 3, and 6. 7 is a prime number, so it's just 1 and 7. If your GCF is 1, you know you're done. That answer there would be B. I think a lot of people who chose A would have just split them in half like they thought they could do. But guys, once you get to 12 14, so you can split that in half again. You'll realize that if you try to check it, when your GCF is two, you can go again. 
So that's the benefit of checking your work. Um, it, it, I mean, it's really hard to miss it if you do that. All right, so number four was B. Number five, uh, similar to yesterday, and I told you today, you're only going to have three answer choices. Uh, it's, it's just going to come down to whether or not you're reading the question. So it says Olivia has run three fourths of the marathon. Jersey has run five sevenths of the marathon and Davis has run one half of a marathon who has run the most. So I think yesterday's question was asking about who walked the least a little bit different. Again, I don't care who you start with. I started with the first two names that I saw yesterday. I'll do the same today. So I got Olivia. I got Jersey. Olivia ran three fourths. Jersey ran five sevenths. So I'm going to compare their two totals. Bottoms up. Four times five is 20. Seven times three is 21. I need to know who ran the most. Looking at 21 and 20, comparing those fractions, I see Olivia ran more than Jersey. That doesn't mean Olivia is the answer. That just means Jersey's eliminated. So then I'll take Olivia's three fourths again. This time I'll compare it with Davis's one half. Go bottoms up. Four times one is four, two times three is six. Again, trying to figure out who ran the most, looking at six and four, Olivia's total, her fraction represents the most, it's the greatest fraction. So that answer would be A. That's one where guys, you just gotta do a little bit of work. And if you know your facts, that one should be one that you're getting correct. So, like I said at the beginning, I'm thinking we should have a ton of fives, even though it's only Wednesday. Make sure you're using those notes. Uh, and look, at this point, I can't really make them much harder. Like if you're getting a five today, you're probably getting a five Thursday and Friday, uh, as long as you're not making silly mistakes. But if you feel really good about them right now, I, I don't really see how it can get more challenging than it is because you got to read, you got to make sure you're not panicking on those fraction questions, uh, and you just got to do the math. It's, it's, it's really one of those weeks where – if you know your multiplication and you read these questions carefully, you're probably going to do pretty well. So fingers crossed on that. Thank you guys for watching. A couple more days. Friday is the one that counts. So keep practicing. Keep taking those notes. We'll see you tomorrow.